17 years ago, I arrived alone in Florence, Tuscany for the very first time. Like many young girls embarking on a foreign adventure, of course, I thought I was ready to meet the love of my life. But it was not yet time. I drank in the cultural and architectural beauty with awe and reverence. Little did I know the man I would one day marry was walking through those same streets, eating and drinking in the same squares, dancing till dawn in the same discotecas, and yet we never crossed paths. If you had told the younger me that I would leave Florence, have adventures all over the world, live in so many other countries and parts of Italy, experience years of deep, loving relationships and almost be tempted to say yes to marrying others before somehow being drawn back to Florence, I don't know what I would have thought. Many years later, when I was living in Rome, I would spend so many weekends with Italian friends. We'd drive up to Tuscany from Rome. We'd be in Florence. I would be on sailing trips with friends of Guido. I would go to the exact same birthday parties that Guido attended, and yet we never laid eyes on each other. So before I share this story of how I met Guido, I just want to say that if you have given up on a city or on the probability of finding someone, Remember that it could still happen, just not on the timeline that you expect. Good morning, good evening. Uh, let's settle down and have a little chat. Uh, if you are not aware, on Instagram, and also I posted to YouTube this week and, and asked you if you had any questions for a Q&A because my emails are getting out of control and I, it gives me a lot of anxiety because I think, oh no, this poor person, I would love to respond and then I just don't have time to it. I can see the emails just coming in, just hundreds of them, and I can't possibly respond to everyone. So Q&A is a good opportunity to uh, answer some of the common questions yeah, over 500 questions, and I'm not going to answer all of them, obviously, but let's just start with the question that hundreds of people asked, uh, which was, uh, how did I meet Guido, and how did we fall in love? Was it love at first sight? Uh, what was one of the other ones? The other ones was, uh, who said I love you first? Uh, I debated whether to share, what to share. I talked about it with my family and my sister and, and uh, I just, it's really difficult. Uh, like for example, I've had very long and serious relationships with people I really was very committed to and we were talking of marriage and all, the, all these other things and I never shared it on social media since I've started this YouTube channel as well and I've not spoken about it at all. I haven't had them be on camera because I wanted to keep that part of my life private while I was still deciding whether the relationship was one that would, be, would end in, in, in marriage because I think that it's uh, important to me to not have social media at all, either the good or the bad, even if people were like, oh, we love you together. And I just thought, no, I want to make this decision clear headed. And so that's why I never really shared my past relationships. And some of you thought that I was single or something. And I, I, I wasn't, I was in beautiful relationships, but I just, just kept that private because, you know, relationships are hard enough without <laughs> taking on board a million opinions. That's also why I kept my engagement private for four months and only just announced it three weeks ago. I was honored by Guido's proposal and I love the sacred formality of marriage, but I've always been cautious about this choice of partner and I didn't say yes straight away because I take this promise very seriously. With the ubiquity of divorce or just heartache and betrayal, we see so many people get this choice of partner wrong and it can't be easy to forecast how a rapport will transform when we turn 40 or 50 or 60 years old. I didn't want social media influencing such a personal decision. I've noticed how people often assume the female is the one in a couple who is desperate to be married or just waiting to be asked, but that's not always the case. It's possible for someone to be nurturing and romantic, yet also discerning and prudent. I have also filmed uh, some of the some of the questions with Guido on our 
long trips uh, between the farm and Florence. Uh, so uh, he, yeah, he has some responses in here. So you don't just have to look at me. Well, I'd come out of a relationship that was very, very important to me and a person that I loved very deeply. And I decided to end things because it just, there were, I just did for my reasons. I'm not going to tell you why. And, um, and uh, so I wasn't in the headspace at all of, of looking for someone. And so it wasn't love at first sight. I didn't, in fact, I've never in my life experienced love at first sight. But I do believe it exists. I've, I've met a lot of people who have had it happen to them, but just hasn't, hasn't happened to me. Um, I'm, I'm much more of a slow burn. I fall in love very, very slowly. I think uh, someone asked, one of the questions was, uh, how do you protect yourself in relationships? Well, I can tell you, I, uh, I'm not, uh, I might be adventurous and all the rest of it, but I'm not uh, like that. In, in, in relationships, I'm, I'm just quite old fashioned. I go very slowly. I only fall in love with someone. I can never fall in love with one element of a person, like their profession or how they look or what nationality they are or anything like that, how they just one one night. Uh, I, I, it's more about how they treat me over time. And that's when I really fall. And then I fall and I'm just totally, uh, they become my whole world. But I, it, that it rarely happens to me. I don't fall in love easily or quickly. And I think that's helped me avoid uh, getting too hurt because I don't tend to rush into things uh, with relationships. Um, I don't, I don't ever, never had a one night stand. I mean, also you guys know I don't, I don't drink. So that sort of helps because I never find myself uh, in, oh, I got so wasted. And then I ended up fell into bed with someone or ended up kissing this person that I you know, barely know. No, that, that just never has never happened to me because I, uh, I'm usually, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite upfront as well. I, I, I don't really have any qualms about saying who I am, what I, what I love, what I'm not interested in, and I'm not interested in, I've never really been interested in casual dating. I've always been very, um, <laughs> a huge, uh, advocate of mon monogamy and, and having things be official, um, getting back to the story. So, Yes, I had just come out of a very painful breakup uh, because I loved this person so deeply and, uh, however, just realized it wasn't the right person for me. We were set up uh, by these two friends. My landlord in Florence uh, is Italian, uh, Cosimo, and he, his wife is French, uh, Marion, and they were just crazy about getting us together they kept he kept telling uh, Guido about me before he even met me he's like you've got to meet this girl blah 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 uh, so Cosmo and Marion these two great friends of mine um, I lived also in, in Florence with Marion we shared a flat not not as boyfriend and girlfriend but with, as friends and we roommates and uh, they invited me for a dinner and uh, they told me you have to meet this Australian girl, uh, she's amazing, you will match surely because she's sportive, she loves nature, she's beautiful and so on. And uh, I went to this dinner with no expectation and thinking about other things it was during the week so there was work on um, work thoughts and everything so i just wanted to sit next to my friends and have a couple of maybe three glasses of wine and just forget about problems uh, but then uh, marion took me from an ear and said no no you're sitting next to her she made sure that we we sat together and it wasn't like sparks flying straight away but I'm used to that I've fallen very deeply for people where it's not been sparks straight away and I think it's it's healthy right because um of course it does happen for some people I know but but uh for for a lot of people and especially young people if you're out there and you're just first starting to date I think it's good to take your time with someone and get to know them and see how they treat you um uh 
And so anyway, yeah, so we started talking that dinner, but it was just, I just didn't, I just saw him as a, as an acquaintance. I didn't really think any of, of love or anything romantic. And then at the end of the dinner, Guido says that he, because he was involved with someone, he just thought, okay, this is it. I have to, um, well, he had to close things off with that, um, with that story, uh, and uh, before he would start with me. So he didn't really make a move or anything. He did, wasn't flirtatious at all. Uh, but I was just, the dinner had finished and I was just off dancing and he came to say goodbye. And in Italy, you know, you, when you say goodbye, you just kiss on the cheek. Uh, when we said goodbye that evening, like we, not hugged, but I, I touched her to, uh, to give her a kiss and, it was like a sort of sparks, like come si dice una scarica elettrica. It's like when you touch the the uh, a jumper, a wool jumper, and it does. And he went to just kiss me on the cheek, and he just put his hand on the on the back of my back here, just his fingertips, and and I felt this like this spark. I felt this like jolt of like something, like electricity. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but even hearing myself say it, I'm thinking this sounds crazy. But then uh, much later when we were actually together, he, he said he, he, that he felt it too. And then um, my parents who have been happily married for, well, over, over 40 years, um, they said that she, my, the first time they touched, their fingertips touched, there was a little spark of, of energy or something and that, so it's peculiar I wonder if any of you have ever had that um, so yeah it was quite bizarre because I've never felt that before and anyway we went our separate ways and and we didn't we didn't really pursue each other uh, but then the the first time we were sort of alone together we were just went into the countryside we were walking through the forest and, and we were with other friends and having a lunch and and uh and yeah, I think the thing that impressed me about Guido is that he is very, uh, even though you can, you know, he's sort of a little bit um, timid and he's not, he's not like one to, uh, well, he's not like these people who are super extroverted charmers, you know, the one who's got all the lines and the, you know, is very confident and he's not like that. And, but he was very brave I guess in 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 being comfortable with his feelings and telling me straight away even though he had no sign from me that that I was I was necessarily reciprocating what he felt and I I think that's always it's it's very romantic because um it's so much takes so much more bravery to put yourself out there and tell someone you're falling in love with them before you've even kissed them before they've even said I feel the same way right so I just, I had so much admiration for him, it just seeing how emotionally intelligent he was and, and, and just how committed he was because it takes commitment to say, right, I want this, I would like this relationship and, and I'll, I'll put myself uh, at emotional risk uh, in order to, to have, a, have a chance of making it work. And, how many questions have we got this morning? <laughs> no. um, another question I had is, um, who said I love you first? Do you remember? Yes. <laughs> I said first, yes. yes. But you said it before we kissed even. Yes, yes. But that's what I, I like is, you know, being really clear with each other and articulating that you love someone before even the first kiss. You don't always have to trust the talents when they say, I love you, but I was sincere, so, but that's... Uh, <laughs> and, and then, uh, and, and how did you know that you were falling in love, when you were falling in love? How did you... When I met you the, the first time at the dinner, I knew that you, I had to try and, 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 and be with you, and then, uh, at the, fir the first date, but probably, yeah, I mean, at the first moment I said, okay, this is it, I have to uh, try and catch her somehow. Uh, 
uh, I have, you just feel it, but I think uh, when we spoke and I saw you that you, you were, how do you say, <laughs> uh, sparkling and, and, and shining. I could. And so I said, oh, this is very shiny and beautiful. I want to try and see what happens. And then we just clicked very easily in, 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 in not in what we were saying. Oh, I, yeah, also in a yes, I like this, I like this other, but it's, it's a sort of ca comfort that you feel when you are talking with someone and that with which you match, uh, I suppose, deeply, I think. I don't know, what's your answer for that? There are just all different types of people from the Campania, from the countryside around that day at the lunch, and there was this, the, lots of uh, old, elderly gentlemen, and this old guy came over, and he, he must have been like 90 years old or something, and he was like, what are your intentions with this signorina? And, uh, and, and Guido said, well, Look, I'd, 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 frankly, I'd love to marry her, but I'm just, let's just work on, on getting through the first date. And yes, and yes, 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 and yes, yes. And then it was a beautiful lunch. And, and then from then on, that's it. Here we are. And um, it was a non-stop run. It hasn't been uh, a relationship of like, oh, we fight and then we break up and then we got back together. And uh, it's not... It was just it, it was just simple and easy from the first moment and someone asked about the uh what was it about what we admire about each other and or what uh what makes it work and i think it it would be naive to to assume that one isn't going to encounter uh, conflict in a relationship i've had enough long term relationships to know that and i've lived with everyone that i've been in a relationship with and i've had relationships that are five years long, four years long, two years long. So uh, I, I think that's the thing is that both of us, Guido and I, are a little bit older. So we're not at this stage in your life. You, you understand much faster uh, who you have in front of you and you're able to uh, discern whether it's someone you can trust and it's someone who has uh, values that are aligned with yours. And so uh, for those of you who are perhaps thinking, oh gosh, I've been waiting so long for love, don't worry, because even with the passing of time, I think as people get older, or even just, it's not even a case of age, I think as people have more experiences in love, uh, they get better equipped at uh, understanding uh, what they want and what they need. And, and then you can know a lot faster whether it's, it's going to work or not, because you've, 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 made all the mistakes or you've had all that you know how you are in a relationship you know how you are when you live with someone if if on, on let's say on my side uh, the fact that i've had my life my experiences and doing my mistakes and everything made me re realize what i wanted and so when you try and do mistakes and everything it's easier to when you find what you're looking for to recognize it because many times you don't know what you want and you don't and you haven't got the ability of of recognizing uh, the, maybe the love of your life or another or an opportunity or whatever and so that yeah it meant uh, lots of a, a long journey before doing also lots of mistakes to arrive at that point ready to meet you and to recognize you and to be ready also to say okay i want to commit to this to this uh, opportunity and probably if we met uh, 10 years before when you were in, say, always in florence uh, we wouldn't be we couldn't uh, we wouldn't have matched in any way because I was in a different moment of my life and you too so yeah I suppose luck but you have to also be very aware of what you want and 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 be ready to risk uh, to achieve uh, to catch uh, 
perfect prey, so... <laughs> yeah. Bobo de, de la campaña. Uh. <laughs> People would be like, oh no, you can't treat a woman as a prey, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but if you want, if you want, uh, I'd, obviously you're not a prey, uh, um, but there's a, a, a part of, of uh, dating and, and of being romantic that implies also some instincts, some passion, some... So we are still humans uh, and, and humans have been uh, hunters once. So <laughs> that brings out your instincts, your passions, your you focus more on the object. Even though we come up against conflict or just a day where one of us or both of us is, is cranky or tired or, or just has little patience, uh, we resolve conflict so quickly. It's amazing. Um, we both just really go straight to saying, oh, I'm being triggered by this. Uh, this is, uh, I'm not angry at you. I'm actually just anxious about this other thing that happened um, at work or with my friend or with my family. And, and so, yeah, it's really, it's really, it gives, I suppose it gives us or gives me a lot of hope because it makes me think, okay, well then you can combat anything if you know how to resolve conflict really quickly. And uh, without, the other thing that I love about Guido is we never, uh, neither of us like shouting, neither of us like going below the belt. And I think some people, they're very comfortable with that and uh, they can say sort of cruel things and then they say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that and, and all is well and you make peace. But I think uh, we both come from families where that's not the case. Like we just, uh, we... And it sounds silly to say it, but we, there's just a lot of courtesy. There's a lot of, even when we both lose our temper, uh, Guido never goes below the belt. He'll never say things that he can't take back. And, and, I, and I try to do the same. And so I think uh, for me, that's a really beautiful thing because it means that you can live without, it doesn't, you're living without fear because you know that you can, um, you have someone who un knows how to communicate with you. And as long as you can communicate, I feel like you can deal with almost anything. Um, as long as you can communicate with respect and, and empathy, right? And compassion. Have you ever been married or ever like... No, been... no, no. Never proposed to anyone. I had relationships that were also long. Uh, some... Uh, were ended disastrously f for my fault but no I never I never proposed to anyone and uh, I actually knew that I wanted to get married and, and, and build a family but I never arrived at the point of really thinking it and really planning what to do so where to move and all the rest so going going in details it was just uh, uh, an idea for the future, yeah, I will one day do it, but no, so. Lots of people asking, does Guido have a brother? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a bigger brother, older, sorry. Yes, I have an older brother and uh, he's happily married with uh, a wonderful daughter, my niece. <laughs> and yes. And someone said, are your parents happy that you're married? Yeah, very happy. My parents, uh, my, mother, uh, my mother loves you and uh, also my father that sometimes is old, a bit old and grumpy. He, he cheers up when he sees you and he is, yeah, he's definitely happy. Someone asked, uh, what are our plans for the family would be like children? Yes, yes, if, if God wants and give us this grace, yes. Oh, so sweet. Uh, yes, yeah, of course. Uh, I had 
really beautiful childhood and I, I could only hope to be uh, <laughs> as uh, as as capable as, as my as my parents were and uh, in creating a family and yeah I hope I hope that we're lucky enough to to be blessed with children I mean a lot of people these days have a lot of trouble with fertility and Hopefully, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two, three. I, I, I'm very childlike, and so is Guido. Like we're both very playful uh, by nature, and we just we really love like both of us. Just we love fairy tales and and Disney and all these things. I mean, it's one of the things I love about Guido, and he just he's sort of like my father in this regard. Like my father just loves romantic comedies. My father he does not in for he's very masculine like Guido has uh, very masculine traits but then also has this ex lots of sensitivity and, and compassion and this tenderness and this just this desire to be uh, in his downtime to consume things that are uplifting and good and sometimes that's not always seen as a male trait it's like oh a male should want like to see violence and be okay with like rape and all that no my both Guido and my father are really just not into they don't enjoy that. That's not that's not like what they like to do in their free time. Guido just loves a, a fairy tale, or, you know. So uh, I think that's certainly something we have in common. Um, where we sort of not uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, there are some incredible films that really go into very dark places, but I don't know. It's just not. I work so hard, and in my downtime, I don't. I don't want to go <laughs> somewhere dark, and neither does Guido. We just kind of want to just when we have like an hour to to devote to a film, we just want to go somewhere that feels light and that leaves you feeling hopeful about humanity. So that's another thing we have in common. <laughs> as as a as a woman, he always makes me feel very protected he ha does these little things which I don't think he's even aware of but like when we're walking down the street he'll always just move my body across so that he's walking outside closest to the cars and I'm protected on the inside which is you know, really lovely and they're just little gestures or for example he's always he'll always be checking in to see if I'm cold if I'm hot and he'll always be it sounds trite oh giving someone giving you the jacket but he he actually is genuinely always just thinking about my welfare and makes you feel very protected and uh, and I think uh, a lot of people might say oh well you know I, I love I love cooking for him and people can say well that's you know I don't know just like too old-fashioned but the fact is I I do that with all my loved ones when my sister was living uh, with me in an apartment in Australia or when she was living beside me uh, a while ago in, in Florence I was always I cooked all the time for her she would just come over and breakfast uh, lunch and dinner was always on the table because that's just how that's how I relax and it's how I show affection for someone so yeah that's just how I am what's your advice for finding the one it's not easy. First of all, you have to understand yourself and what you want because many times we are looking for the wrong thing. So if you look for just beauty, you look for just fun, you look for money, you look for whatever, you will end up searching for the wrong prey. And then when you catch it, you will be just disappointed because you say, okay, this is what I thought I wanted, but then it's, you, don't have, you don't feel well with it and you will just go on looking for something else. Uh, so I think that that deep comfort that I felt uh, meeting you probably was my, myself opening up to love. And so that's what you have to look for, love, and, and, and probably feeding, uh, meeting someone that makes you feel safe to exprime uh, il tuo amore, insomma, because, uh, but that need, need necessary, you will have to be ready to take that risk, because some, many times we, 
we avoid that risk because it's obviously it's very uh, scareful because it's the most painful thing in life loving someone and and being disappointed or uh, being dumped or whatever or being rejected that that because it's it's a d deep deep rejection that scars you uh, deeply so uh, as i said first i think you have to be ready to take that risk and understand what you want reign in life that's not money it's not success or if you want that if you want that maybe love will be not what you what, what you will achieve because money is not love success is not love power is not love all you need is love <laughs> do, 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 do. Brooke, I know that feeling. I've been there. My sister and actually three of my best friends are all feeling this right now. And I think it's particularly hard with the COVID lockdowns. I would say perhaps try shifting slightly from what you normally gravitate towards. I thought, for example, that I needed a fellow creative who understands what it's like to be an artist in flow state. But I found that if someone respects a side of you or your life, that is enough and they don't necessarily need to mirror your passions. Understood. I felt that the, I, lo I loved you as a person and the sum of characteristics, but the thing that I loved more was how bright and, 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 and possibly beautiful would uh, could have been the path with you in the future and and so that became natural so to think about family and wedding together with that because i think that if you want to uh, build a strong family and try and manage to keep it uh, as long as possible marriage is an important a very important step to do it's not just let's let's try and see how it goes it's a, it's a proper commitment so we are also doing it in church and i believe that that's an even bigger moral commitment that makes it more difficult to bail at the first bump one of the many things that made me realize I could spend a lifetime with Guido is that he was already seeing a psychologist to better understand his fears, his triggers, repeated patterns he'd made in past relationships. He was doing that uh, long before he met me so that he would be ready when the right girl came along or just so that he could improve all his relationships with his family and friends. As my Italian friend Sofia said when she heard this, therapy is still quite modern here, so it's rare to find Italian men who will actively seek out self-knowledge and therapy uh, that isn't motivated by a divorce or a trauma or some kind of intervention. Anyone who's lived with a partner for over a year knows you can't change a spouse. You can only hope that they desire growth and emotional evolution. So it's beautiful to be with someone who is humble enough to want to work on knowing themselves better so that they can treat their loved ones better. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's amazing and it's fun. And uh, what else can I say? She is really what she shows on, on, on her videos. And she has the amazing capacity of transforming something normal in something beautiful, full of light, full of uh, opportunities. So a, a, an awful rainy day becomes a, a wonderful, cozy opportunity. I didn't know, you, you think you know what you were looking for, but as, as, as you don't really know until you find it. And you say, oh wow, this is what I was looking for. So, her, sorry, you, sorry. <laughs> I saw how kind you were, how uh, you cared about making someone feel loved. Uh, I saw also how you cared about how you manage the, the 
uh, how do you say, the, the, the looks of a house or a place where you are. And so I thought, wow, if I want to give a present to my ch future children, uh, ch it would be giving them a mother like you. So I said, okay, that's... <laughs> Uh, that's it. <laughs>